Greetings everyone and welcome to the next video in my lecture series on applied differential equations. In this video we're going to be solving um, a homogeneous linear system with distinct real eigenvalues. Uh, recall that from the theory our solution is that um, our vector capital X is equal to the sum of c sub i uh, vector k sub i e times uh, e to the power of lambda i times t, where a lambda i and a vector k sub i, well lambda i are the eigenvalues and k sub i are the associated eigenvectors for your matrix A. So our example, uh, we're going to solve dx dt is equal to 2x plus 2y, and dy dt is equal to 3, uh, x plus 3y, and you can tell that this is homogeneous because we're not adding any um, uh, uh, terms that only have t in them. That would be uh, our f of t's. So the first thing we're going to do after writing that now we're working on the answer, uh, so this is homogeneous with, and I'm just going to write this in matrix form. In matrix form it's capital um, X vector prime, so the derivative of it, is equal to some matrix times vector capital X, where I'm trying to make my X's nice and distinct, uh, nice capital letters as opposed to lowercase. Um, and my matrix A here is made up of 2, 2, 1, and 3, all the coefficients uh, that you can see in our system above. And so now we want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. So we say that we want the determinant of A minus lambda times I, where I here is I2, the identity matrix, is equal to 0. Writing that out, we get 2 minus lambda and 3 minus lambda. We're basically subtracting. Uh, lambda from the main diagonal elements, and then the off diagonal elements remain the same. That gives you zero, and so we get, uh, writing out that's the determinant, 2 minus lambda onto 3 minus lambda minus 2 is equal to zero. A little bit of foiling y yields a lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6 minus 2 is equal to zero. And we get that lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 4 is equal to 0, which factors to lambda minus 4, lambda minus 1 is equal to 0. And that gives us our eigenvalues of 1 and 4. There are two of them. They're not repeated in any way. So this is this distinct case. If instead we had and um, uh, for our characteristic equation, we uh, got lambda minus 4 all squared. That would be repeated uh, eigenvalues. These are also real. So that's good. And then we say, in order to find the um, eigenvectors, that a minus lambda i onto k is equal to the zero vector. So we're going to first let lambda 1 equals 1. That's our first uh, eigenvalue that we found above. The second one is 4, and we'll do that one in a minute. Then if you uh, put that in, basically we're subtracting uh, our eigenvalue from the main diagonal elements. And instead of 2 and 3 on the main diagonal, we're going to get 1 and 2. The off diagonal elements are going to be 2 and 1 as before. And we're finding out what makes the system equal to zero. Hold on, there's the phone. Okay, back now. Where was I? Uh, right, so we had, um, we we're trying to solve for the eigenvectors here, and we put in a minus lambda i all onto k is equal to uh, the zero vector. Um, if we take our resulting matrix here and we are ref it, you can see that all we have to do is actually subtract the second row from the first row, and we get um, that uh, the first row, 1, 2, 0, remains the same, and the second row becomes identically 0. 
Now our uh, uh, y value, uh, y variable here is a free vector, or sorry, a free va variable, um, and that means that we let y equal t. And then if we look at the top row, it gives us x uh, plus 2t is equal to 0. That means then x is equal to negative 2t and y is equal to t. And that gives us our vector k is equal to negative 2 and 1. You could write a t after that if you wished, uh, but I'm just going to label this as k1. That's going to be our uh, eigenvector that's associated with lambda 1 is equal to 1. Now we have to do the same for the second eigenvalue. Our second value was uh, lambda 2 is equal to 4. And then when we solve um, a minus lambda i is equal to 0, uh, we're going to subtract 2 from the main diagonal. The main diagonal initially was uh, 2 and uh, 3. And so I'm just checking that. Uh, am I right? Yes, 2 and 3. So when I subtract 4 from the main diagonal, I get negative, negative 2 and negative 1. Wow, that's not right. Yeah, negative 2 and negative 1. And the off diagonal uh, entries leave, uh, stay as they were. Now when we RREF this, um, clearly if we multiply the bottom row by 2 and add it to the top row, we're going to get zeros. If we uh, take the top row and divide by each entry by negative 2, we're going to get 1, negative 1, and 0. So again, y is a free variable here. We're going to let uh, y is equal to t, then x is also equal to t because the top says that x, plus, uh, x minus y is equal to 0. And then uh, k2 is going to be just 1, 1. And so we've got two distinct eigenvalues. Um, with their eigenvectors, and we can just write then what the answer is. Then our vector capital X, oops, I didn't want to make it that big. Our vector capital X is equal to the sum of CI uh, vector KI e to the lambda IT. So it's going to be C1 K vector K1 e to the lambda 1T plus c2 vector k2 e to the lambda 2t. And we've just found that k1 was negative 2, 1, e to the, and the lambda 1 was 1, so it's just going to be e to the t, uh, plus c2 onto 1, 1, e to the 4t. And that is our solution to the big system. If you wanted to check that, then you could take, then you could differentiate it um, and multiply it by a, and then show that that was equal to, uh, or sorry, you could differentiate it, and then you could also take this and multiply it by a and show that those two are equal to each other. Now we're not quite finished yet because I did want to note that if there were an initial condition, say that uh, capital X of 0 uh, is equal to negative uh, 18, 3, or something like that, um, you can solve for C1 and C2. So if we take a look at our uh, uh, vector, our solution for vector X up above, um, then we can say that that is equal to we get that c1 onto negative 2, 1. We've got e to the t here, but we're uh, finding it at 0. So x of 0 is equal to c1 onto the uh, column vector at negative 2, 1, e to the 0, plus c2 onto column vector 1, 1, e to the 0 is equal to uh, negative 18 and 3. And then if you uh, multiply everything out, then you're going to get uh, two equations. Top one's going to be negative 2c1 plus c2 is equal to negative 18. 
and C1 plus C2 is equal to 3. That's just a nice little 2 by 2 system here. Um, and if you just mentally multiply the second row by negative 1 and then add it to the top guy, the C2s are going to cancel and you get negative 3C1 is equal to negative 21 um, at, with solution If uh, negative 3C1 is equal to, to uh, negative 21, then C1 has to be 7. And since C1 plus C2 is equal to 3, that means that C2 is equal to negative 4. And then let me just turn the page on my solution to make sure that I don't screw this up. Uh, then I get... capital X is equal to... Uh, when I put in the 7 for C1 and then multiply it through, I get negative 14 and 7 as my column vector onto the e to the t minus negative 4. Oops, sorry, that should be a positive 4 and 4 e to the 4t. And there we are.